I'm Sylvia Vollenhoven, one of the directors of Jersey Gold, and I am in Johannesburg, South Africa, and in Sweden, in Malmö, in the pretty south of Sweden, we have my co-director, Frederick Gerten. Hey, Frederick. Hey, Sylvia. So, yeah, you and I, we, we made this film together, Josie Gold, and uh, we already released it in South Africa in June. But the film is going to have a premiere in Sweden on theaters now, also in Denmark uh, with the CPH Docs. So tell, tell us about the film. What is this? Why, are, why is this film important? I think there are three things that pulled me into the film. The one is that the main character, Mariette Liefering, is very dynamic and very engaging in the most unusual way. And I like unusual people because I'm quite crazy myself. But the film taught me such a lot that I didn't know. And it's not just that I didn't know, but scary information, really scary information about what I'm breathing in every day and how this dust is making people, especially children, so sick. And the third thing that pulled me in was it was an opportunity to work with you. And that's been great fun. Sylvia and I worked together in the 80s during the apartheid years. Uh, and it was crazy times also uh, and I, I always wanted to, to reconnect but in the process of this film uh, I think we're talking about the elephant in the room so everybody in South Africa knows that the, the mines have created a disaster in, for the environment but it's like nobody really wanted to talk about it and, and this amazing inspirational lady Mariette Liefering She's been almost by herself digging up information that is, it, it, it was there all the time. The knowledge was there. This is a radioactive mount, mountains. People are living on radioactive soil. Did you know about this? When I was, you know, a young journalist, my aunt once told me that she has a crash near to one of these mine dumps and the children are constantly sick and there's a high proportion of children with cerebral palsy and she thinks it's the dust. But I was so busy covering the end of apartheid and a whole lot of other things that I didn't really listen to her that much and she subsequently died of cancer. And when I started working on this film, I really, really thought about how she had tried to get my attention all those years. But at least now we have Josie Gold that is getting the attention. I was very perplexed that no one knew about the risks or the hazards, that knew, no one seemed to talk about these risks or hazards, because the visible evidence is there, but it is as if the whole issue is shrouded in secrecy. There is a reticence, almost an avoidance of talking about these matters. You know, for hundreds of years they've been digging out the riches out, out of the earth. Now that they've left these big holes and a big environmental disaster, along comes Mariette and she goes digging in a very different way. And she brings up not useless metal that sits in gold bars in vaults around the world, but she brings up useful information that can save our lives. The film is about something we all talk about now. It's about public health. But it's about public health for, for the poor people. You know? Exactly. Whenever we show the film and expose people to it, they become instantly engaged, instantly they understand what the problem is. And so it, it has shown me that people didn't know the extent of the problem. Um, and like you say, it's the elephant in the room. These mind dumps are hiding in plain sight. And they are just so part of the landscape that nobody thinks about them anymore. But once we've made people aware through these screenings and, and through the campaign, through the outreach campaign, people have become engaged in lots of different ways. That's really cool. Let's see. I mean, so the question is, of course, why should people in Sweden and Denmark watch this film? And I, I think, first of all, I mean, the environment, our planet is something precious. We have to be responsible for it. People's health is important, also poor people's health. I also think it's really cool to have an inspirational person like Mariette, you know, to see that one grandma actually, by just being stubborn and keep going, can change, can make so, so much change. So I think there's a lot of inspiration in that. And I think also in these crazy times, we need to talk about other things than this kind of the news flow coming in about this, this virus because we will all go crazy.
before we die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind going crazy, but going crazy and dying is, is a big combination for me. And so, yes, you, you're right. But I think what Josie Gold forces us to think about and this virus forces us to think about is we can't put the world in compartments. We can't say this is an African problem or this is a Joba problem or this is a Swedish problem. Um, everything on the planet affects everybody else. And in another way, not enough research is being done. So we don't even know what kind of impacts there are because very little research is being done into how people's health are being impacted, not just here, but everywhere else. And then I think the reason why people in Europe should care is because they should stop using gold, wearing gold, putting gold in gold bars and stupid vaults underground because it comes at such a huge cost. I do not wear gold. I wear imitation gold, fake gold, because I do feel that gold is dirty. The film will, will have its premiere the 3rd of April in Sweden. The 5th of April, you and I, together with Mariette Liefering, the main character of the film, will have a talk again. And then people will be able to call in and, and ask questions and so on. So this is like almost like a little bit of a of a test broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great. So we can we can turn this into a regular show. We can, we can. So Sylvia, um, see you soon and, uh, and talk again. Ciao. Thank you, Frederick. That was my co-director, Frederick Garten, in Sweden at WG Films in Malmo. We produced Josie Gold together. Go and see it, if not at a cinema that is still open online. I do not wear gold. I wear imitation gold, fake gold, because I do feel that gold is dirty. We have got 600 kilotons of, 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 of uranium around Johannesburg, still in the mine dumps, and we know that it blows away when the wind comes. You can see all of this now is in the shelves, on the products, on the till points, on everybody, on everybody. The gold mining industry had been in operation for 120 years, but it left us with six billion tons of iron pyrite. My wife started getting sick. There was just nothing that they could do for her. Cancer. We can't be silent on these matters. We have to speak out. Good morning and welcome on our toxic tour. Where we are standing now is radioactive land. You live next to a radioactive and toxic dump. You've lived here for many years. It almost appears that God is indifferent to the plight of these communities and that anger is in, in fact a motivating factor in my life. Oh, yeah. Lovely to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Thank you very much. We can't say we're responsible because we didn't cause it, but we are there to try and resolve it. May I ask who will do the rehabilitation? I can't answer you. I do not think that I am an intellectual giant, but I remember well. These are two of my father's law books, South African Criminal Law and Procedure. Are there any of you that want to come with me to the Legal Resource Center? And we're not going to vacate these houses. The, the charges basically, it is failure of duty of care. I just think that perhaps God has lost his interest in mankind. And that is why I felt it is now my duty to go out and to try and restore some sense of justice.